Hi guys, trust you are good. You are highly welcome to another insight tutorial on this channel. My name is Omotola Demi Gai, and if you are new on this channel yet to subscribe, kindly do subscribe today. To all my subscribers, especially those that subscribe while I was away from this channel, yes, I've been away for quite some time now. I want to say a big thank you, thank you all to all my subscribers. In our tutorial today, I shall be showing you guys how I went about the making of this sleeveless jacket, which you can actually style in different ways. You can have it on a pair of leggings or with your bodycon dress underneath. You can have a trouser to go with it or even a skirt. And for the front, you can have it fastened together with belt or you simply do your hook and eye. Either way, you are good to go. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the tutorial. I have six yards of Ankara fabric here for the tutorial. And of course, I shall not be exhausting the whole six yards. So once I'm done cutting, I'll go ahead to measure what we have left. I also have one and a half yard of velvet sequin fabric here. Although the breadth of the fabric is long enough for what I will be using it for. But because it stretches, that was why I avoided that. And I got one and a half yard, which was measured along the self edge region this way. So the one and a half yard has given about 50 something inches this way, which will be long enough for what I want to do. I also got interfacing, which I'll be using for one side of the fabric, while for the other side, I'll make use of this other interfacing SD. And to stabilize the velvet fabric, I'll also be using the SD interfacing. To cut the upper part, one could choose freehand method, but I chose pattern drafting so as to be able to put certain things into consideration. One is the difference between back length and front length. If I don't freehand, I will not be able to put these differences into consideration. Also, there are certain fitting lines that make garment to fit very well on the body that one needs to put into consideration. So I've gone ahead to transfer out the body's pattern up to the waistline since the garment you are making has seam at the waist. And while transferring it out, I made sure to use the fitting line at the waistline this way on both front and back. Okay? If you are in search of that basic bodice pattern that works magic, kindly chat me up on WhatsApp. I've got you covered. So these are the transferred body looper, which will now begin to modify to the style at hand. So I'll be starting with the back piece. And the first thing is to make use of the waist shaping. So I'll be trimming half an inch that was marked out as the waist shaping this way, lest I forget. And afterwards now, I'll be picking the width of the band. The style we are having has band so which has to conform with the shape of this waistline as it has followed the waist shaping so i'll go ahead to simply mark three inches band width this way and i will mark it out i'll cut as you can see the waistline isn't just straight it's slightly curved and that's the effect of the waist shaping that we made use of okay being sleeveless i reduced the shoulder width with just half an inch this way and on the waistline to create the pinafore effect, I just found midpoint of total measurement that I have on the waistline, which is five inches. And I went ahead to connect the two points together this way to create the pinafore effect. For the neck, I decided to just widen my basic neckline, just quarter of an inch for both depth and width this way. Then I went ahead to cut it off like so. And with this, we are done with the back piece. The dart on the pattern would not be needed, so I decided to clean it so as to avoid any form of confusion. So with this, now we have our pattern in place, which we can use repeatedly, you know, especially for those of us that are into ready to wear. Okay, so for the front piece, the first thing I'd like to do will be to make use of the waist shaping as well. So I'll cut it off this way. And like I did the back, I'll be measuring the width of the band, which is three inches following the waist shaping that we have used and you see so i'll cut off the band as well so on the shoulder line i came in half an inch as well and on the waistline i simply measured the same five inches that we did for the back and i went ahead to connect the two points together then cut it off this way 
So for the front, I decide to lower the depth by half an inch, but I still maintain the width of quarter that we use for that of the back to cut the neck shaping. So with this now, we are done with the alteration of the basic bodice pattern to the style at hand. But I like to cut the lower part first. So it's from the remaining pieces that I'll be placing the bodice pattern that we have drafted. That's how to manage your fabric, okay? So I folded the fabric diagonally at about angle 45 degree. Then I started to mark out the hemline, one and a half inches for hemline. Then from that point, I subtracted the back length, back length, which is 15 three quarter, not the front length. Then I was subtracted, I went ahead to measure the full length, which is 58 this way. Then I added half an inch, which I'll be using to attach the upper part and the lower part together, okay? So this region now is my waistline. So I divided the total waist circumference by two. Waist circumference is 38. So divided by two will give me 19. And because this back piece now, I still went ahead to fold again into two. So that will give me nine and a half. Then I went ahead to add sewing allowance of one and a half. I'll use half an inch to turn. The one inch will be the sewing allowance. So in all now, I have... Uh, 11 inches this way okay so from that point i went ahead to measure it again to know the total measurement i'm having which is about 45 so i make sure i cross check that i'm having the same length at all the points this way okay so it has to be equal distance this way and i went ahead to mark properly then cut out as my back piece so spreading it out now this is how wide it will be, which is just good to go. So I went ahead to fold it back into two and placing it on the remaining fabric, I went ahead to cut that of the front pieces. I only made sure I left about half an inch here at the center front so as to be able to finish up that region. Okay, hope you understand. So this is the first piece and I use this first piece now to cut the other piece and making sure it paired up, okay? In the same way, I folded the lining diagonally to cut for the back piece, and also went ahead to cut lining for each of the front pieces. I use satin as my lining here, okay? From the pieces of the fabric, I went ahead to cut the upper part, and here I actually doubled the fabric, so to differentiate, I use the hard interfacing on one side, while for the other side, I use the ST to differentiate the lining from the fashion fabric, okay? For the band to be attached, all I did was to cut a long strip of fabric, bearing in mind my total waist circumference. Waist circumference is 38, so on fold now I have 19, and I made provision for same here. I also went ahead to cut another long piece just like this. So on the first one, I fused the hard interfacing. On the second one, I'd already cut the ST. But I wouldn't be fusing ST directly on the Ankara fabric. Instead, I want to use the Ankara fabric to cut out the sequin fabric. Luckily, the sequin fabric has this plain velvet edge, which I first trimmed out to cut my belt. Okay, so afterwards, now I went ahead now to use the Ankara to cut the sequin fabric. Lest I forget, the width of the band is four inches. Remember that we remove three inches while we're drafting. So plus seam up and down, we have four inches, okay? So having fused the SP interfacing on the sequence fabric, I'll be placing it on the Ankara as base to further stabilize it, okay? In the same way, I cut out the velvet sequence fabric, just like you cut out a face out for both the upper part and the lower part, and I stabilize with interfacing. Can you see? This way, all right? To commence sewing, I placed on the front piece the sequin fabric, tucked in this edge, and went ahead to stitch on it all round like so. And having done that, I went ahead to join the back piece together with the front, then press open the seam on the shoulder line. I also went ahead to do the same thing for the other side that is serving as the lining. And afterwards, I paired the two sides together right side facing right side and making sure that both are lined at the shoulder line so i went ahead now to turn and finish the neckline likewise the center front region and afterward this is what we've got 
okay i have two words i went ahead to finish up the tooth side using half an inch which was the provision i made for sewing so once that was done i pressed open the tooth side and with that the upper part was ready and it's still obvious the difference between front length and back length which explains some of the fitting problems that we do have as designers okay so i went ahead to prepare the lower part stitching the velvet trim more like you do your face out then i placed on each piece the lining i started from the hemline to stitch and use the lining to pull up and stitch the two sides with that i was done with the front piece and this is what you have and likewise the back piece was well prepared this way so the next thing will be to place on uh, the front and back pieces together and go ahead to stitch at the sides using just an inch however i'll still be cross checking my waist measurement okay so here we are i've joined the two sides together and i went ahead to press open the side seam and with this the lower part too is ready so to join the upper part and the lower part together i had to centralize and notch the center point region this way okay so the next thing will now be to prepare the band, which is the first thing we'll be attaching before the upper part will be attached. So here's the band strip this way. So what I'll do will be to place this on fold so as to centralize and get the center point region as well. Okay. So having done that now, I went ahead to notch and I'll be going ahead to attach the two notchings together and pin all the way like so. Okay. When pinning, ensure that is the sequin fabric that is falling to the right side this way. Do you understand? Okay. Then afterwards, I went ahead to stitch. And I won't stitch. This is what you have. So to finish up the waistline, I'll be attaching the other side of the band, which had the hard interfacing this way. Now go ahead to stitch. So stitching that side now, this is what we've got. So the next thing now will be to go ahead now and attach our belt. I'd already gone ahead to prepare the belt. So attaching it, this is what you have this way. And even with this now, the lower part is further, further ready. So it's just the bodies now that we're going ahead to attach. So I had to notch the midpoint as well this way. And even for the bodies, I'll be centralizing the back piece. I'll be notching as well. Then I'll go ahead now to make sure that the two notchings are aligned. I'm making sure I pair it to the right side of the fashion fabric with the right side of the lower part. And at first, I'll just be attaching it with just one side of the band, the one that has the, the sequin part, the outer part, not the inner part, okay? So I'll go ahead to also attach the front piece this way to align with the center front region the sequin with the sequin part like so this way okay so once that is done now i'm going to go now to stitch but before you stitch ensure that the pinning is actually correct okay so as to avoid loosening loosening all right so i went ahead to stitch that and this is what i've got this way so the last but not the least thing that we are now doing will be to just go ahead now to close up this waistline and to do this i'll simply be talking in the edge of the other side of the band this way making sure that it's aligning with the outer part okay so i'll simply fold the edge inward by half an inch just like you prepare your waistband for skirt so as i pin i'll i mean as i tuck it in i'll pin it down to making sure that they align at this point one just needs to take one's time very well there's no need to rush rush it okay so that once one go to the sewing machine one will just be able to stitch it straight on and without any of the parts falling out okay so as i stitch i'll be removing the paint and also i'll be applying easing technique at some point to making sure that both the upper and the lower part of the band are lined okay with this, we have come to the concluding part of the sewing aspect of this, our jacket, okay? So project completed and looking beautiful this way. So measuring what I have left of the Ankara, I'm having about one and a half yards. 
haven't made a short skirt out of it for my client okay so for the sequin fabric i still have this much left which of course is still good to go to making another version of this uh, jacket for someone else all right i do have a couple of online classes that will help your fashion upgrade like the lapis basic bodies class is top notch the lapis trouser class is also top notch i have contouring flat color class and so many other classes and if you are in need of a private section you could have one kindly chat me on whatsapp for details of all these classes if this video has been helpful kindly give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you are yet to subscribe until my next video thank you for watching bye for now